good afternoon ian uh, hope you're well it's been long that we have uh, met and uh, i think we met sometime about 5 years back uh, as you know i've been with tcs for long long time and played various roles about 3 years back i have taken over the tcs enterprise cloud division for uk us and india geography and uh, i'm very glad that we are talking from that context perspective which is the most happening area in today's world uh, good to see you Ian, and I look forward to this discussion well it's great to see you too pradeep yeah it's not so long ago that we were facing each other across the negotiation table but uh, i'm glad to see you yeah um so a little bit about me i am now working for uh, isg and uh, i've just written a uh, report a study on the next generation private cloud and data centers and uh, yeah we can share some of those findings and uh, look forward to our discussion yeah great uh, so ian uh, i'll kick start this discussion uh, the uh, i'm sure you are uh, looking at the market from various lenses and uh, you are interacting with various customers what are the kind of trends that you are seeing in the market particularly in the hybrid and private cloud area and uh, what kind of uh, observations that you have well the let's start with hybrid cloud hybrid cloud is certainly there on the agenda and by its very nature and naming it is looking over the top of a number of cloud services so it removes that problem that uh, of cloud lock in that some uh, organizations fear so i think that's the first thing the second thing is about hybrid cloud you've got public cloud which is the basically working with the hyper scalers or private cloud which may be based on vmware or one of the other services so the hybrid cloud sits above those and can pull things together and you can run your applications and systems seamlessly across the different cloud environments. Um, I think, you know, as we go forward and particularly public cloud matures, you'll see a lot more organizations having hybrid cloud as the standard. But it's a journey. And it's also about the facilities and capabilities and what you can add around the cloud environment. Uh, FinOps is an obvious one where organizations are trying to work out what is their optimal costs, how do they manage costs going forward, and uh, what choices do they have in terms of alternatives. And, and also what I'm seeing, uh, Ian, I'm sure uh, you would have observed the same, is that while every organization is trying to get into hybrid cloud mode, they there are varied approaches that people are taking because of their uh, constraints because of uh, the time it is taking for them to adopt to the hybrid cloud etc are you seeing any uh, kind of uh, lag in terms of uh, getting those benefits for customers or uh, are they kind of are the customers are saying they are on track with respect to their benefits and uh, approach First of all, if you look at the approach, there's lots of organizations that have said, tally ho, here we go, and have fallen badly on their noses with not planning it or inviting an organization like TCS to come and help them. So that's the first thing. You need advice and guidance to go down the cloud route, however big or small you are. The The other thing about... Um, transformation to the cloud it's often driven by digital initiatives so organizations wanting to do different things with the business and they just can't because of the way the configurations are the way the infrastructure is and the way the applications are welded together so it's a big challenge to go through transformation um, there's a couple of things around the application area that are quite interesting Early on in the cloud history, um, organizations were looking at uh, just sort of lift and shift. We'll put it straight on the cloud and it should work. Well, I think one or two may have made it work, but the vast majority have uh, found it very difficult to go down that route. And today we're seeing a much greater emphasis on let's rationalize, sort out the application portfolio, deal with the extra business requirements, 
look at technical debt. You know, we may not need certain applications. Um, we may need to modify others, etc. And, and getting your house in order, ready for that transformation. Then moving to cloud is a much easier job to do. What I've observed uh, in, uh, in the market, the kind of uh, journeys customers are seeing, uh, that initially the ambition is, uh, like the way you mentioned, exit the data centers, get rid of technical debt, move 100 percent into private uh, into public cloud and i think that's the ambition with which every customer is starting and the kind of business case uh, cost savings that they're projecting i think that's all uh, at the start looking very very rosy however once they get into the actual execution mode there are a lot more challenges that they're facing in terms of uh, moving completely so then they have to identify or uh, kind of find an alternate approaches or varied approaches to the uh, the existing environment and then when when they start to find varied approaches i think the cost is escalating there are huge transformation costs or huge uh, colo costs or whatever it is so i think given these circumstances given these scenarios i think finding the right cloud uh, solution be it hybrid cloud uh, private public or multiple public clouds or colob on prem i think finding the right balance right approach i feel that's a key to the success of achieving the business benefits but at the same time scalability flexibility and agility for uh, for the customers i think that's the trend that i'm observing that every customer is uh, kind of struggling to get that balance right yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. But I think there's one other dimension which is often forgotten. Who is the advisor? Who is the service provider or providers that you're going to do with things? You know, that's the opportunity you have with TCS is to step in there and show the way forward. Um, and then added around the cloud platform, whatever one you choose, there are a number of capabilities that you also require and they must be integrated into the cloud platform itself. So for example, I mentioned earlier FinOps. So that's managing the financials, looking at it, how can we optimize, etc. So in a private cloud, you're just paying for the cloud, irrespective of how much you use of that service that you bought. So that can be a fixed price and it can be a heavy fixed price. With public cloud, you've got the option of actually paying as you go. That's how public cloud is. And you need to have the right software and mechanisms and APIs in place to do all that measuring to make the optimum choice around what service and what am I prepared to pay for. The other trend that I've observed, uh, Ian, again, uh, I will look for your views, is that uh, while public cloud has pay-as-you-go model, and private cloud has some kind of a fixed model. Uh, the FinOps, the cost uh, uh, controls that we need to put it in order to place uh, the infrastructure needs for both sides, whether it's public or private cloud, I think that's going to play a major, major role. And uh, right controls using the FinOps techniques, I think is going to be very critical. No, you're absolutely right. And uh, that's why cloud is not just simply a bunch of code. There is engineering to do with it, real computer engineering. And a lot of people don't understand that and what needs to be done. You know, you've got your back to the old days of computing when I was young, when you looked at sort of system performance, have we got the right network capacity? What is latency? Have we got the right number of VMs running? What are our data requirements? There's a whole list of engineering aspects that must be thought through. And organisations don't necessarily have the answers. So it's a bit of a voyage of discovery. But once it's done, there are successful implementations around and very good advisors and organisations to help that can make it a success. Because once, you, once you're over that hurdle of transformation, the business can start to really take uh, the benefits. And in your experience, when you are selecting or when you are advising customers, 
uh, when you want to select uh, a particular vendor or a service provider for a hybrid cloud scenario what are the key uh, criteria or what are the key uh, areas that you look for while selecting uh, a vendor or a supplier well i think the first one is always to think through where have they done this before because if you haven't done it before then you may be on a very short fuse and a wing and a prayer to make it work. So it's about credibility, really. Have they done it before? So those are the looking at it across the board, general help with the uh, transformation. There are, of course, niche players in the market that you may need. So if you were looking at a particular financial control model, then you might want an organisation working with your other suppliers who looks at FinOps and FinOps alone, making sure that's right. So it's getting getting the right brand. And I think what you probably need to be really successful is, is the right number of providers in the room who can work together and don't end up fighting, but not too many. It may just be one that's got all the skills. It may be two or three, but that's the first thing to look at. Um, secondly, it's, it's about where you actually want to run the services from. So if you're a global player, you want to understand fr- from the networking perspective, how is that all going to work? Where do I get a low latency network? If you're working in Australia and in Europe, you know, it's a long way for things to fly around networks and come back with sensible response times. So the second area is around the environment and the engineering that you have to do to make the thing work properly. I mean, thirdly is around where are the services going to be located? So if you look at London, for example, London is awash with data centers. I, I fear that that could be a disaster waiting to happen if anything untoward happened in London. But that said, you know, where are the best places to put your data center and where will it run from? And it's not always in the obvious places. So those are sort of, you know, some some of the key criteria. There's a lot of detail around that. And then clearly, as you look at making this all work, how are you going to train your own team? How much in the run environment do you want the provider to do for you? You may say, I just want it as a managed service. I'm not interested in anything else. You may want to say, I want to engineer this because of some of the special things we do. But it's how, who's going to do what. So it's very, you need to be really clear early on about the respective roles and responsibilities. It's too late to do it once it's all working. Happy to host you in India uh, or in London uh, when you have time and uh, we can take you through in detail those uh, aspects, uh, Ian. No, I think that would be absolutely great, uh, Pandeep. You know, really happy, uh, happy to do that. And to me, India or London, it it really doesn't matter. I just love your country. So if there was a choice, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. I think that's 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 definitely on cards now, Ian. Thank you very much. I think it has been it was a great uh, discussion. Uh, a lot of takeaways for me and i'm sure uh, you also would have got some view on the understanding of tcs so i think it's great uh, to connect with you ian again and uh, look forward to hosting you no that's super pradeep and you know thank you for your time today and uh, as you say great to see you too so thank you